This episode contains scenes of hunting. While part of daily life for many First Nations people, it might be upsetting to some. Viewer discretion is advised, but don't say we didn't warn you. I'm a writer. I care about the story and the people and places that make it. Action sports writing is brand new to me. It's tough, but it's worth it. My life is just like the camera in my hand. Focus on the most important aspects, capture the best moments, and if at first you don't succeed, take another shot. up to Whistler and Powder King to hang out with the First Nations snowboard team and I'm really excited for that because it seems like this is a group doing amazing things within the Aboriginal community and to boot New Tribe magazine might be interested so that's a really great spot for a story like this. As far as like photos and you know the creative side you know I'm, we'll get some shots in the park and then we'll head up to Powder King and hopefully I can work on some some night stuff in, in the snow up there so it should be pretty good. Since 2004, the goal of the First Nations snowboard team has been to provide a positive environment for Aboriginal youth to experience winter sport. From recreational to high performance snowboarders, every participant receives a season's pass. They get gear, and most importantly, they get the guidance of passionate, committed coaches. So this is Tannis here. She's gonna be learning with us today, maybe listening in on a couple coaching sessions that I have with you guys personally. All right, if everyone can give a go Tannis for me, we'll be ready to go. One, two, three. This is a life. I always find that every story is easier when you have an inside source. And a member of the Underexposed crew, Jordan de Millimeester, was actually a member of the First Nations snowboard team. Better yet, Jordan, or Mowgli as we affectionately call him, is now paying back the program by coaching the next generation. When I coach kids, I like to ride at their level. So if they're still like making a couple turns snow plowing, that's all I'll do. The biggest thing is making them like motivated and happy. We'll get down, we'll have fun. Like, yeah, buddy, high fives all day. Team awesome, stuff like that. Just finished the racing and now we're in the little terrain garden and we're gonna learn to ride some boxes. Yeah, so how do I do this? What should I do? Go straight? What if I don't know how to butter? Am I allowed to just go without buttering? Okay. Okay. Dropping? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Straight. Yeah! Good job, Tannis! Good thing you got your helmet on for taking photos. You're great, man! It's so I can stand on my head! No laces in my sneakers or I never tied them up. Well, the moment that I'm trying to get is this last kink in the rail. Got the camera positioned in this little sun patch and it's creating a flaring effect. Over the past 10 years, the First Nations snowboard team has gone from 10 kids at one hill to more than 450 riders from 12 nations in BC, Alberta, and even Washington State. You just have to want to snowboard. We'd like to support you to become a snowboarder. Uh, we'd like to build a program in all communities in Canada and North America. Wherever there's a ski resort, there's probably a First Nations people from the area, we want to bring it out to the communities because we've seen how it can transform youth in a positive way. So as soon as I stopped kind of competing, I was just kind of over it. I wanted to get more back. I wanted to come back home, get more in touch with my culture a bit. And uh, doing that, I wanted to start my own snowboard team. So me and my mom, my mom helped me out a lot, and then we got one going last year. Then this is our second year, and it's grown from 12 kids to 18 kids. Yes, this guy's an ill dude. Ill baby Tokyo, ill baby Tokyo. One of the biggest things is uh, trying to use snowboarding as a tool to get kids more in touch with their culture. Kids will never be up there in the mountains and realize how special they are and how fun they are without this, like, you know, tool that I feel like I can provide them with and show them. I'm blogging on my fresh coast to coast is on my speaker. Spread is on my line. Got a session making heaters. Capital dropping rare. I snagged a couple shirts. Sticks and stones, custom wood. My steez leaving hurt.
Whistler's done, and next up, we're hitting the road to Mowgli's home turf, Powder King in northern BC. There, we actually have a few other things lined up, like a moose hunt, so we'll see what happens there. Danger factors is he's gonna might try to protect their calf. And if you do, you hide under the snow because she can't find you. Make sure you're covered. Whew. After Whistler, we went to Powder King and to Chatwin to spend some time with Mowgli and his family and on his home turf. You know, Powder King is such a like, crazy place because there's always powder. It's always foul. Well, this little tree is begging me not to trample him. You're going down, tree! <laughs> I picked up Megan after Whistler because she's just such a down-to-earth girl. She's so in touch with her culture, it really inspires me to uh, keep on doing what I'm sort of doing. I feel really lucky that uh, he wanted me to come as his athlete to join with him. I don't know where he is now, but... <laughs> When we rolled into Powder King, I mean, I liked the feeling of it right away. I liked that it um, was a lot smaller scale seeming. Everybody seemed like they had a pretty good sense of humor and like kind of take everything a little bit easier, like grounded. A little bit of a kind of a party atmosphere to them, kind of like heavy metal. Like... Northern. <laughs> yeah, very north. <laughs> very northern. You want to do double shot together? <laughs> you shouldn't go down there. I ain't scared. It's been pretty sweet hanging out with Moog so far, you know, at Whistler, now at Powder King. Getting to know what his story is and what he's done with the First Nations snowboard team, so. If we're going to write something that's inspirational to to youth to, to get involved in the sports. I think Jordan's a great example of, of where you can you can take that program and go with it yeah. basically. Yeah. I understand that Jordan has set up a hunt for us when we get up to Moberly Lake. Um, so I guess we're gonna split into two teams. You're gonna go with Jordan's grandma and I'm gonna go with his brother Jonah. And hopefully that will greater our chances of, of getting a moose. We met up with Mowgli's Cookham, and that's Cree for Grandma. Cookham is an awesome lady. She has so much energy and she's gonna take us hunting. She's 60, she looks incredible. She's so cool. She must be one of the coolest women I've ever met. I think I got the calf, and the mother won't leave the calf. But once she sees us going up there, she'll take off or attack us. And she only had three shots, so she had used two of them and only had one left. And we started hiking up, and it was just like pretty intense. Cookham said, Danger factors is he's gonna might try to protect their calf. And if you do, you hide under the snow because she can't find you. Make sure you're covered. Whew. You know what we could do because we're so close to home? We could run home and go get my other shells. By the time we come back, she might be gone. You got a gun here? Okay, turn around, right on. <laughs> Did you get one? What do you think? 
Jeez. <laughs> you should know better. I hope those guys got a moose. That'd be sweet. I'm, I'm hungry. <laughs> Because she's going to come back here, Jordan, so she'll be checking, so you'll be ready with your gun. Just stay right here. You don't have to go nowhere. She's up on top of the hill. Gotcha. And she's probably going to come down this way here, grandson. Is she hit? I don't look like it. Huh. This is what us native people do. This is what we live on. This is one of our main staple foods. And uh, we use all the meat, we use the bones, we cook the bones, we take some of the insides. There's medicines in certain parts of the moose that we use also. But this is what us native people live by. Nemoson pan lui, kao pigi no come Adeline Desjolet go Louis Desjolet ka upige hito. Ka gip si si an ma nan do ki tsngito sik sik siyo ka gitate po ni an. Nemo so ma na hao. Squishy switchy wen kan do ma chik peino. Hao is go ma ni skots ka gip ka gip chikita ma nemo so mui. Wichi wa kwin do kisno amut an si si kan do ma chik peya. Kishkishian, Kamichia, Pap, Aya, Pihil, Mana Mina. Ego Mina Wapushak, Ego Ashkondo, Kashkui Chigia, Mobili River. But Kaki Mana Mosha Nemosho, Kagi Nipahat, Uyakichi Gama, Uyash Kitch Kagi Michia, Mana Kaki. Goman no Komki Chikita, Nemosho Spota hit Kando Machi Pea. Baskashman little pack shack, kiss that on my back, good take a heart, he got tongue, and she's in your cappy, give it down. No more show me takes no moot, he got come and gish shian, and she's a key go on my chon. Oh, yes, I give me chiakayas. He got no more show me a kagix no moot, tobacco mana. Kishin queen, a pahachi, keep in a shit mana. We are man under a tree, key I hit. You go mana. Kapita man ka pasik sigit nik sigit in ki go ni pahat. Gaman na ka wiki pina sit hao. Squishy sigwa. Kando. Kando na ta no i gagana mo so itu it. Guti man na i go kai tuta he tik sna mo te bako. I said njitchem. Kishin ko ni pahat che pugo kana skumi ni gama. Mo skas guta kut na ti gana mo so man Gumanego got the he. Kaimihano, he said, Gutamanego achigo na pisian. Gotego scots no mosho mana. Kinashkumat kimantum no ego mother earth. Quashi gutaman tobacco kia hat. How kimantum no kinashkum teno ma mosho kamea. Joasim shaki go no shumakamit shoak. Ego no to go koyas kaman sho. Pan kapan sa uko yas kinaskum tin ni tawinan umako yas kay tutogoya. Guman ni stamine ko kote amen kito yan wega kita man kigoy. Kinaskum ko yan gaman ni musum kaniso ay kaniso kamo tan si si ay kinaskum mo yan kisin musum mo taka ni pahat. Pagok ko yan kani pahat ni musum tuit po kinaskum mo. Most got good natty go kagi win can do meat swing. Pugogota kaya in canaskum at kimantum no, kuya si tota woman. Ipaget niski goi mother or so takamis. Ao kaki goxinist and doting, you go no sumak me in a gaman next no more. Masi, 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 kitwem. 
Hey, I wouldn't care how far up a hill I shot a moose if I had her with me. <laughs> Zoom them all the way down. <laughs> I'd never seen that before. <laughs> For me, moose hunting with Cookham, with Mowgli's grandma, um, it was one of the, the best experiences I've had in a long time. And I think that in society, we've lost touch too much with where that food comes from. You know, chicken and steak, all that stuff. It's not born into a package onto your shopping aisle. It comes from somewhere. And I really wanted to connect with that. Um, so um, what better, better way to connect with where your food comes from than to catch it and prepare it yourself? <laughs> Okay, this is how we start. This whole journey with the crew and underexposed and all the First Nations, and for me to just learn and learn about more and the different diversities of each culture is just amazing. The episode before, Meg really got to show us her culture a lot. I felt so honored to be able to see that with for myself. It really made me want to just show you guys like where I'm from and put my regalia on the other night. And I never did that in eight years probably. <laughs> and like, you know, she just really like inspired me to do stuff like that and really want to do culture and drumming and sweats more. And, to see him dancing and to see him all done up in it, it's such a different side of him that's still so fully who he is. I think this is a really special show that you get to do that everywhere you go in every zone, every territory, because uh, you're bringing to life something that's so, um, it's not in the dominant culture. You don't see it when you go into a town, but when you go in and you meet like kind of more the heart of the people, of who the people are and what they still carry from old, older times, and for, to put that on TV, is really, I think it's something that could be, you know, help change the world in a better direction. Cue the dramatic music. Bung, 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 bung. Bung, 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 bung. Sheldon! Sheldon! The hill's actually closed today here at Powder King. And the staff and, and people that work here have been nice enough to shuttle us up with sleds and, and show us some pretty amazing spots. Like this one. I don't know, Sheldon. I think you should try just letting me just go without a camera first, please. Can you stop recording now? <laughs> Sheldon! I don't like the camera. Camera's not gonna hurt you. Megan's just up at the top waiting to drop, but uh, this cloud has sort of positioned itself right in the way. So I'm just gonna wait for that to blow off and then hopefully illuminate this scene. Did a night shoot while we were there, and that was that was pretty cool. A couple things that didn't work out perfect, but we did get a we did get a nice photo out of the, out of that setup. Just like backlighting with snow moving and there's snow falling too, so there's this you know, it almost looks like stars in some of them. This whole week with the First Nations snowboard team and up north with Moogs and his family has been a lesson. Um, and I think that's, again, kind of a theme with me. Every time we come out here to experience something or try something new, it's all a learning experience. And 
as usual, I had my struggles. <laughs> and I was put here for a purpose. I may not be the best snowboarder, but I could be a good teacher or a role model for someone. Now that it's all said and done, I think we have a really sweet story here, so I think we should head into New Tribe and pitch it. Let's drive down to Calgary and see if we can make it happen. Sounds good. So my name is John Medeiros. I'm the managing editor of New Tribe magazine, and I hear you guys have a pitch for me. The one we wanted to talk to you about today is the First Nations Snowboard Team. It's an organization that works with kids, with youth, um, to teach them a, like about a healthy lifestyle through snowboarding. You know, just just being able to to ride and, and not have also the burden of expenses because it is it is quite an expensive sport to get into, and this this program allows youth to to get into it. We also have a guy named Jordan who I think would be a really good face for this story. It's a really good like personality profile with a major lifestyle twist. Our readership is basically um, Aboriginal youth. I think this would be a great story for our magazine. I think our readership would really enjoy it. Uh, so if we can get anywhere between 1,000 and 1,200 words, yep. uh, that'd be perfect. We'll do a cover story on it, and um, we'll uh, run it when you guys are ready with it. Great, well thanks you guys for coming in. We'll yeah. definitely uh, would love to have it in the magazine. Awesome. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we look forward to having it and uh, putting it on the cover. Cool. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Someone once told me that unless you're part of the adventure sport world or capable of doing what those athletes do, it's almost impossible to be successful writing about it. Clearly, I'm not in the same league as the pros, but I'm still getting out there and I've sold a couple stories and it feels pretty good. I'm stoked to publish with New Tribe. It's a perfect fit for inspiring youth, and that's exactly what the First Nations snowboard team is all about.